Okay, so it looks like a boat runs along a triangular course marked by buoys A, B, and C. The race starts with the boats headed west, that's going towards the left, for 3,700 meters, and the other two sides of the course lie to the north of the first side. The lengths are going to be 1,700 meters and 3,000 meters. We need to draw a figure, okay? Draw a figure that gives a visual representation of the situation. Then we're gonna find the bearings for the last two legs of the race. So we need to find two different bearings. All right, I'm just gonna move this over to the side now that we see the question, a little more space to get some work done. And to solve this, I'm gonna start by drawing a diagram just as we were instructed. This will be, I don't know, buoy A. And moving to the left here, they say going west. So I'm going to the west and uh, buoy B is gonna be located right over here. And where's buoy C? Well, I guess buoy C has gotta be somewhere to the north of it because the legs, they say, are the legs are above it. So I'll put buoy C maybe right around here. So we're going first from A to B. And since they're going around this race, they're going from B to C. And finally, they'll be going from C to A at the end. We're told that they're going 3,700 meters to the west first. So that must be this one over here going towards the west. And then we have 1,700. I think that's going to go right over here. And we also have the 3,000, which has to go on the last side. So this is going to be our visual representation or the diagram. And now we're going to go ahead and figure out the bearings and things like that. Now to keep things a bit more organized, uh, I'll call this angle A, and let's make this side A, the 1700. And for angle B, across from that, we'll call the 3000 side B. And across from angle C, this 3700 is going to be side C. Now that we have a diagram drawn, I'm just gonna make it a little smaller, give myself some more space to actually solve the problem, okay? Uh, I'll start with this angle B, just because, it doesn't really matter which one we start with. All right, uh, B squared is going to be equal to side A squared plus side c squared minus two times a times c times cosine of angle b okay that's the formula we can use now b is 3000 so we can write 3000 squared is equal to a which is 1700 squared plus c squared that'll be 3700 squared minus two times a which is 1700 times c which is 3700 times cosine of angle B, which we still don't know yet, so we'll leave that alone. Now to clean this up a little bit, I'm gonna subtract these two values to the left side of the equation. And by doing that, we'll get this. Next, we can divide both sides by this negative two times 1700 times 3700, and we can get And plugging this whole thing on the left into a calculator, we should get something about 0 uh, 0.6025, 6025. And that's approximately equal to cosine of angle B. Now to find angle B, we're gonna have to take the arc cosine of both sides. So we know that angle B is gonna be equal to arc cosine or inverse cosine of this approximate 0 0.6025. Now plugging this into a calculator, we get that angle B is approximately equal to 52.9 degrees. So after all that work, we were able to find out this angle B. So I'm just gonna box that and hold on to it. I'm just gonna move this over to the side and get rid of all of this work since we don't need it anymore. Now going back to our picture here, I can go ahead and just enlarge this. Let's put in that number we just found, and I'll try to use a different color just so you can see we calculated this or we found this out. That's the 52.9 degrees right there. And uh, I guess we're done with this angle B, so I'll get rid of this. Now let's use the law of cosines again and solve for angle C. Here's the formula. Substituting our values in, we're gonna get Now, just like we did earlier, we can subtract these two pieces to the left side, and by doing that, we'll get... And dividing both sides by this negative two times 1700 times 3000, we can rewrite this as... Yeah. 
And taking inverse cosine of both sides, we can say that angle C is equal to arc cosine of this entire thing. So we'll take this whole thing right here and I'll just kind of copy and paste that. Put that right over here. And let's plug that into a calculator. Plugging that into a calculator, we get that angle C is about 100.2 degrees. Okay, that's important. So I'm just gonna put a box around that. Let's hold on to it. I'm gonna move it to the side and just get rid of all of this since we don't need it anymore. Now let's go back to our diagram. I'm just gonna enlarge this and take a peek. This is a uh, 100.2, put that right over here. And we can use, uh, what, we can add these three angles up and subtract from 180. And I believe that gives us uh, that angle A is 26.9 degrees. Hopefully this is all right so far. That seems right, okay, seems pretty reasonable. And also just a bit of a side note here that this angle measure of 26.9 should be the smallest angle because 1700 is the shortest uh, side length here. 52.9 uh, is the next biggest angle and this is going to be the medium uh, side length that's opposite of it. And across from the uh, longest or across from the greatest angle, we have the longest side length. So just keep that in mind that the, they have to be proportional. So the smallest angles, smallest sides, longest angles, or biggest angles, longest sides, and medium angle, medium side. So this, this seems pretty reasonable to me. Now we don't really need this anymore since we already labeled it. And I'm just gonna make this diagram a little bigger because we still have to figure out our bearings here. Um, to do that, we don't need the side lengths anymore. We were just using those side lengths to actually find out our angle measures. But now that we have those, I think we can find the bearings. We just want the bearings of the last two legs of the race. So we need to go from B to C. So let me just label that as the bearings to go from B and we're going to C. Uh, that means that's going to be like this part of the triangle right over here. And to figure out that bearing, uh, maybe what can I do here? I'll draw a north line. This would be like a north line going straight up and down right over here. So again, for bearings, this will be north and it's also going to be zero degrees. And to figure out our bearing, we're gonna have to move from that vertical line to wherever this is. That'll be our bearing from B to C. And to do that, we can just take 90 and subtract 52.9. And I believe that's going to be 37.1 degrees. That's gonna be right here, 37.1. So for a bearing, we can say that this is going to be 37.1 degrees. Uh, I think we could also say this as uh, north 37.1 degrees east. Either one of these should be the correct bearing, I hope, <laughs> for this problem going from part B or buoy B to buoy C. Now from going from buoy C to buoy A, that's the last leg of the race. Remember we started from A, then we went to B. That was the first leg. Uh, they asked for the second two legs, so we need to go from B to C, which we just did. And we're going to find the, the bearing from C to A now. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this just because I don't want things to get overcrowded right now. Um, and we need to kind of find uh, the, the bearing here. And to do that, we do need a vertical line uh, or show uh, where our north line is relative to point C, going from C to A. So our north is here and this is going to be zero degrees. Uh, but to find this bearing, it's going to be a little bit tricky. That's going to be this angle measure right over here. Okay, that's the that's what we're looking for. Um, now, it's a little bit confusing the way things are written, but just keep in mind that this is a right angle. If we drew a vertical line, that would be perpendicular. So if this is 90 degrees uh, right down here, then we could actually just kind of take this angle of 26.9 and add it to 90. And subtracting it from 80, we'll get this angle measure right over here. Um, and just to make this a little bit more clear, maybe I can just redraw this triangle on the side. Um, oh, that is a rectangle. Okay, so I don't know, something like this. This will be 90. We know this is going to be 26.9. Um, and this one's 90 degrees already. So if I extend this line, this is our vertical line right over here. And we're looking for this angle measure. Just, I kind of drew this just to kind of clean it up a little bit. And if this is going to be 90 degrees at a right angle, let me see, what's 180 minus 90 minus 26.9? I guess we could just do 90 minus 26.9. I believe that should be 63.1 degrees. 
it's not really drawn to scale, so sorry about that. Uh, and if we know that 63.1 right over here is going to be supplementary to this angle, we can take 180 and take away 63.1, and we get 116.9 degrees for this angle measure. Now, one way to write this bearing is gonna be 116.9 degrees. That's coming from uh, the top, from the north line down to here. But typically when we write our bearings with like north and south, uh, at this case, or in this case rather, uh, hopefully you can see that if we drew a like north, if we drew an east-west line here, that this bearing is actually below the east-west line. So we typically actually write uh, south first. So we need to see how many degrees up from the south line that is to get to here. Okay, um, if we know that uh, this is going to be 116.9 already, we actually already found out this angle measure of 63.1. So to write our bearings using our north and south and east and west and all that, we can say this is going to be south, uh, then 63.1 degrees, and then east. So these two things are the same thing. I just thought I'd write the bearings both ways in case that's helpful. I don't know which way is more uh, appropriate in your case, uh, but the, th these would be the two bearings for uh, the second two legs of the race from B to C and then from C to A. And so just to recap real quick, uh, you were given the side, side, and side of uh, this triangle. So we knew we could use the law of cosines. Uh, by doing that, we could find uh, an angle measure. I started with angle B, then we, find, then we found angle C. And subtracting from 180, we could find the last angle as well. Uh, once we had those uh, angle measures, we could then go ahead and find the bearings. Uh, earlier, I drew a vertical line here, and we were able to find the bearing from the north side. That's going to be north 37.1 degrees east. Uh, the second one was actually a little bit more tricky. So uh, we drew our north line that was right around here. And by doing so, we actually can draw a right triangle. So whenever you can draw a right triangle, uh, try and do so. It might make things a little bit easier. Once you knew this was 90, uh, these two angles here had to be complementary. So 90 minus 26.9, that got us our 63.1. If it helps uh, to draw a cleaner triangle on the side with a little bit less things going on, go ahead and do so. And at the end here, we saw this 116.9 and 63.1 are also supplementary. Uh, that'll help you find out your bearing coming from the north side. Uh, but once you're below, kind of like you're on the south side of things, uh, we can see how many degrees coming from the south uh, and that's 63.1. So hope you found this video helpful and uh, I will see you in the next one.